Welcome back to the channel. Like I said in the previous video, we're going to tie a shrimp pattern. This is a clear water shrimp pattern. It's not my pattern. This is a pattern that I've seen and I liked, so I recreated it. Threw in kind of my own little twist, and I'm going to show you how I tie it with no hand function. And the vise, I have a Mustad 3407-DT in size 2. The thread I'm using is Danville 210 and Olive. And we'll get to the other materials when we get there. So first, I am going to start my thread on the hook. And come back a few wraps. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. Filming on my phone. And now I'm going, going to add some black medium B chain. Oh, for me, I use my whip finisher tool. All right, try to get the B chain hooked. I get it hooked on the side like that, if you can see that. And then try to get my thread on it without dropping it. It's kind of frustrating, it takes a couple minutes to get it, but. Drop them a lot, but that's just part of it. And there we go. Once I get a few wraps on it, then I can take the wood finisher tool off. And it just makes it a little easier for me. I can't pick them up and hold them how I need them. Trying to make it to where y'all can see that. But once I get them attached, then secure them down with a bunch of different wraps. X wraps and come underneath and do some more X wraps. Make sure they're on there straight and level. They look like it. Do a few more wraps on it, nice and tight. And then I'll work my thread back. I'm gonna stop. Just a little past the point of the hook. Triple check my eyes, make sure they're good. I believe they are. And just for extra security. Maybe not. Well, I'll skip that part. I can't get my super glue open. But usually I'll put super glue on the top and then on the bottom and let that soak in while I while I prepare my next material. The next material we're gonna tie in is some pseudo hair that I have here in olive. And I already cut it off the hide just to save a little time, but I'm gonna show you how I prep it. So I try to pinch it in my between my fingers the best I can and then I'll hold it close to me and pull out 
the longer fibers that I don't want. few wraps make sure it's about where I want it I'm gonna try to hold on to it and do a few reps going down the bend and for me it always twists I just try to grab it and twist it back into place to where I want it There. I'm going to cut this clump off so I can see what I'm doing a little better. Doesn't have to be perfect right now. I just want to get that out of my way. I know there's faster videos on YouTube of how to tie flies, but for me, tying with a disability always takes a little longer. But that's why I'm here. I want to show y'all how I do it so that maybe you can pick up on some tips and tricks to help your flies or help you become a better tire. I'm going to come down a little more on the shank, about right there. And now I'm going to start working back up. Try to get locked in, it's spinning some on me. Looks pretty good. I'm going to wrap back over all the butt ends. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to cover all that up. I like trying to make sure my tail is as tight as possible. I know y'all are looking kind of crooked onto it. Just the way I have my phone set up. I have a long fiber in there on my cut. And there we go, we got the tail. Now we're gonna grab one of the mono eyes that we made in the previous video. Try not to drop it. There we go. Get it started, tied in, and then I can adjust my length. And for that, I just use a pair of forceps. I can grab it and Get it set how I want. That looks pretty good right there. And then I can lock this down with some tight wraps. And I like working back a little further just to give the body a, a more smooth transition transition instead of having a big step in the fly as you can see we got the eye have it pointed up a little bit I'll take my scissors snip 
snip this one off. I try to do it slow because they like to fling. And then it makes it harder to pick them up, especially if they hit the floor. Oh, same thing with this one. I get it started, get a few wraps on it. And then once again, I take my forceps. Went a little far. If it slides too far to the side, I can usually get it and push it down with my thumb to about where I want it. And those look pretty even. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this one down. And then we can cut out that extra. And I'm gonna wrap down over these butts. And again, right here, I'd add super glue to them. But man, I can't get my super glue open. I'm gonna have to skip that part for right now. Then you can get your eyes and bend them out how you want them. I usually have to use my forceps. So I just grab below the eye and bend that mono out. Just like that. Just my tail again. Those eyes look pretty good. I don't know how well you can see those. Turn that a little more. So we got our eyes on. And adjust that how we want. I'm going to come back a little bit. I got a couple olive silly legs here. Got these from Bass Pro. It's more of a, a dark olive with a bar. I'll try to wrap it around the bobbin. And then bring it up lock it in place try to keep it on top of the hook shank the best you can once I get it locked in with some wraps I can come back just to where I can hold the bobbin with two hands and put more pressure on it fix my spool here before it falls off there we go What I usually do is take them and flip them upside down to where they can hang. And I just eyeball where I want to cut. Because I can't hold them and stretch them. So I just get them with my scissors, get them to about where I want them, and then I cut them off, which is about the length of the tail. That looks pretty good. I'm 
I'm gonna let the bobbin hang at about the point. Next material we're gonna tie in is a EP tarantula brush in brown. I'm gonna cut some away to where I can get to the wire. I'm going to try to push that material back away from that spot that I just made. It's not the cleanest, but I don't think that you'll see it once it's wrapped in. And I'm just going to wrap back to about the start, about the start of the tail. I'm going to come back over and wrap over the wire, make sure it's secured. I'm going to bring my thread up here to get out of the way. Next, take your hackle pliers. And for me, I can get them, usually get them between a finger, and I just push on them with my knuckles where I can grab it. This part's a little tricky trying to pull all these all these fibers back. I usually trap some. Just do the best you can. I'll take my thumb and try to brush this stuff out of the way. Best I can, anyway. We're only going to do two wraps and then I'm going to take my thread back. Without trapping. Too many fibers, hopefully. Try to pull it out of the way. Now I can pull it through. Try to wiggle it, get between them legs and fibers. Get that locked down nice and tight. Which for me, there's going to be trapped fibers. That's just the way it goes. I'll go through and pick it out. Once again, get the hackle pliers fixed between your fingers. And just push on them with your knuckles. That's the easiest way I have found for me anyway. I'm going to take my wire cutters, come in, try to nip that wire. Once again, this part can be kind of hard just because I can't hold the wire. There we go. come back and I can see the tag here so I'm gonna take it and push it down just so I don't cut my thread make sure it's secured there's nothing worse than going to pick it out and you Pull the brush out from underneath your thread wraps. It's kind of annoying. Now I'm just going to take my bodkin and get in here and 
Try grabbing any of them trapped fibers. A lot of them little silly legs on the tarantula brush will get trapped too. Just pick them out the best you can. And I like taking my hand, and just brushing it back. That looks pretty good. I wanna clean up this area a little bit. And if you wanted to, between steps, you could lay down some super glue just to give you a more durable fly. Now I got some 20 pound mono that I've cut. I'm gonna lay that on top. Best I can anyway. Go ahead and secure that down. Get it with nice tight wraps. And again, I'd like to put down some super glue on this just for that added protection. But it's not going to happen. So once again, worked my thread back down the shank. You can see it's pretty shrimpy looking. I'll go through again and I'll pick it all out and make sure everything's straight. I'll probably adjust the eyes some more. Now the next material we're going to tie in is some Estes and root beer. And this is just the standard size. Try to grab that and get it secured in. all the way back to the tarantula brush. And then come back over and log it down. I mean, I'm gonna put a lot of wraps. I'm gonna come and book in front of the bead chain. I'm gonna put a half hitch. Just like that. And once again, get my hackle pliers. Now for me, there's no easy way of wrapping this without trapping a bunch. I can't really brush the material back like I'd want to. I can a little bit in between wraps, but it doesn't really work out. I still still trap a lot of fibers, but I'll come through and I'll pick that out. And I'm going to wrap this all the way to in front of the bead chain. Tighten my bobbin some. Once again, if you're in my situation, use what you have. I'm going to tie this off in front of 
the bead chain. Get it with about three wraps, two or three good tight wraps to hold it and then you can cut it free and get that out of your way. Take my bead chain off. Or not my bead chain, sorry, my uh, hackle pliers. Get my good scissors. Be kind of careful, you don't cut your thread. Now I'll come through and I'll clean this up. Back to right, hugging up against the bead chain. And I'll come back and I'll clip any fibers that are hanging over the eye. Now, there's going to be a, a step missing just because I have to have help with it. So, I'll explain it with this mono that we tied in. You're going to put three tungsten beads, weight of your choice. And then you're, you'd pull it over and make a loop to where the beads can slide back and forth. Kind of like the uh, Avalon crab permit fly but then I drop beads and I can't pull it over enough I have to have help with that so that's going to be where this video ends I hope y'all can see that pretty good it's a very neat little shrimp plot fly I have tied a few for my box I'm really looking forward to trying them for redfish this summer as soon as I can get out on the water so hopefully soon, but it's very neat looking. I think it's going to, it's going to fish really well, especially with that keel and the tungsten beads. It's going to get to the bottom really fast and then have a pretty cool motion on it when you're, um, when you're fishing it. You can use brass if you want to go lighter. Usually where I fish is current and it's usually a little deeper. So the added weight is... I wouldn't say it's necessary, but I, I like having the added weight to it. But if you like if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Like I said, I want to reach more people into my in my situation, being disabled, and tying flies. So the like button will help. And I know you can't see it real well on the camera. Like I said, I'm. Hopefully within the next month or two, I'll have a GoPro and then I can start filming with that. And then I'm going to try eventually get a portable camera to film with. But if you have any questions, leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. But for now, that's going to do it. Thank you all for joining in and have a good day.